Due to such cold temperatures outside, it is 34 degrees and it will stay that way all day long. We have to allow our hydraulic system to warm up the hydraulic fluid. So we, we're going to take our time, move very slowly, methodically until the, the unit gets warmed up.
the big 8 inch hammer with the 10 inch bit or it's like 10 and 7 inch but regardless it's cold outside when it is cold out in the 30 degrees or below you have to let the air blow through the hammer before the hammer can fire the reason why is because when metal is cold metal is brittle and when the piston inside of the hammer fires it'll crack in half when it's cold so compressed air if you know about compressed air you know that compressed air gets hot well what we're going to do we're going to sit here and just run warm compressed air through the hammer for about three or four minutes letting the internals of that hammer get warm once the piston is no longer 30 degrees gets to 50 60 70 degrees we don't have to worry about the piston cracking inside an eight or a nine thousand dollar hammer so that's what we're doing right now i just wanted to explain that little tips that you cannot forget as time goes on or something as simple as like rushing the process will cost you thousands of dollars and a whole i don't know three or four days of downtime until you can get a new piston for the big hammer
while we wait for the PVC glue to dry on the well casing, we go ahead and get everything prepped for the 6 inch bit change.
65 foot right now. And at like 63 to 64 and a half, I went through a soft zone and I noticed that it made some water. So because it started making water, I went ahead and stopped drilling. I didn't want that water to fill in the cavity where the grout's going. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna wait and let the grout do its thing. We are now pumping our second batch. So I have a feeling it'll take three. It should take three, maybe four. But uh, we're gonna let the grout get all the way to the surface. And then we're gonna cover the grout with uh, a plate of metal and a plate of sheeting. And I'll show you what we do.
since the last time I talked to you. The rock that we're drilling through is extremely hard. So we're getting really slow penetration right through it. Uh, at this point, I felt like we should be closer to 200 foot, but we're just not. I mean, for everything that we had to do here, we actually got a pretty early start on the day. And right now it's uh, about 10 minutes till two and we're only at 150, 160 foot. So we should be somewhere in the 220 to 240 foot range at this point, since we only set 40 foot of casing. But, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to pop on here to give you a, an update. Uh, I've burned through all of the drill rods on the carousel. So I'm gonna go ahead now and we're gonna pick up some rods out of the rod box. We've blown everything out, everything off, try to prevent shit from freezing, sticking to stuff. Like, cause everything here I've washed up. So in the morning, it's gonna be like 22 degrees. So 
stuff like this can actually freeze to the table and in the joints. So uh, there's a lot we gotta deal with. Cool. Hey, hand that key to Mike. Here you go, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Make sure that goes on the key ring. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we will return tomorrow. So this is where we will end for today. Uh, Christmas well for, I don't know, 12, 14 homes. But we're out of time, we're out of day, and uh, it's getting cold again because the sun's down. So time for us to go home. All right, well, it is the beginning of part two. The next morning, I am just heading out now. We're gonna be headed to the job site. I've got my dogs in the back. Everybody say hey to Mandy. And then everybody say hey to Ginger. They come with me to work every day. So I wanna show right, I was trying to show you the temperature <laughs> and my camera so cold that it caught off on me. How cold it is outside. It's 24 degrees. So with 24 degree temperatures, everything absolutely everything on the job site froze last night um we're only at 300 feet we might make a gallon a minute so we're gonna have to go deeper because the rock and the well is so hard our penetration rate's pretty slow um we're getting like 16 and 17 minute drill rods that's how long it takes to go 20 foot um it's taking us longer to drill theoretically uh, we should have been able to cut 400 feet yesterday with only setting 40 foot of casing. Um, so what we're going to do today, since we're at 300 foot, I'm going to go to the shop now. We're going to load up drill rods and then we're going to head back to the job site and we're going to continue to drill. And then hopefully, um, hopefully we find enough water that can supply these 12 houses. Yeah, the sun is out. The sun is <clears> out. This All right, well... Things have changed. Got to work, I had a lady call, got really, really bad, nasty water. Um, she had called a couple of days ago and things just didn't pan out. So she called again, she's at the house. So the guys are gonna go to the drill site and they are going to start drilling again. And dad wants me to go out here and basically camera the well to see uh, if a liner is something that can possibly fix it. So. We're gonna head to do this job, which is about 20 minutes from the drill site. And then once I get this well all diagnosed, get my notes down on it, and whether we can fix it in the future or not, that way we get a game plan. If it's fixable, we can come back here, I'll have everything, I'll have all the information, and we can knock it out a lot quicker, maybe do two liners in one day. So I'm on my way to her house now. I am 2.9 miles away, and we will see what is up with this well and then we'll head to the drill site so can't never plan everything things are forever changing forever changing you never know who's gonna be on the answering machine all right we are here i have the weird strangest feeling that i have been to this house before it's probably been something like 12 years or more either that or i did the house next door as i got as i pulled up here i realized like Man, I feel like I've been here. This is a nightmare of a mess. Cotton candy. Yummy, yummy. All right. She said that we had drilled this. I wanted to see when. Okay. It says uh, July of 2000. It's 230 foot deep. And it has how much casing? can't really read that hmm 107 foot of casing yeah a liner is not gonna fix this well it already has a boatload of casing in it so I can camera it still but the problem is to properly camera well you need to draw the water level down to the you know to the location of the bottom of the casing so the well makes 10 gallons a minute and it's got an old 10 gallon a minute pump in it. So I'm not going to be able to draw the water level down to 107 foot. Now, I even corrected myself again because the pump is only at 100 feet and we have 107 foot of casing. So there again, there's no possible way for me to draw the water level down to that depth. 
<sighs> well, this is why we come out. Because typically heavy rain, you're dealing with a situation with dirty water. Um, like we had four and a half inches of rainfall in about 30 hours. I had five people call me, five people in two days, all saying, oh, I got muddy water, oh, I got discolored water, oh, my water looks like tomato soup. So it affected everybody in our area. Um, but to have a 107 foot of casing, it really shouldn't have affected it. But that's not to say that one of the aquifers can't be tied into surface water somewhere. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna try to find the crawlspace entry which I haven't found yet. Here we go. I even asked her. I go, hey, you make sure that there's not a lock. Well, there was a lock. Let's see, is it under here? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> of course, I'm just going to pick the wrong direction to go around the house. Bam. Okay, she said she had a water softener. There's the water softener. Okay. Yeah, and we got lights. And got a little board here. Step. Uh, I like the board that you step across. That way you don't hit the, the drainage pipe. Now, sometimes what I find in, in jobs when they're starting to get dirty, discolored water is actually a bad bladder tank. Because when a bladder tank goes bad, the rubber bladder that stores the water has bursted and then the water now makes contact with the metal inside of the tank and the water and the metal react to one another and it creates a rusty element inside i don't know it, it sounds okay but it feels it feels heavy let's see i think i think she's bad guys Sometimes you'll have air trapped in it, but if water comes out, the tank's bad. There it is. There it is. Tank's bad. I knew it. You have to, you have to get, like, because sometimes you'll have a little gap right here that's like a pocket of air, like an old school galvanized tank. So that's why I always knock on the tank. There, it's not ringing like a bell, it's a thud. It typically rings like a bell. So you're supposed to be able to tip it also. So it's extremely heavy. So if you see, I got water. So I got, I got a bad bladder in the tank. And it really, it does it when it kicks on. There it goes. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's really doing it when the pump kicks on because it, what it's doing it's forcing water in it's stirring it up and it's allowing it to shoot out okay so I'm going to put the filter and bypass look at that that they say they have a water softener they have a 18 inch laughable water softener lord have mercy no wonder it's not filtering and, and another thing, they don't even have sediment filter in here. I don't know who sold them this. Oh, God. Let's see here. All right, we got to turn this in bypass, and then we got to run water outside. All right, so I've got the water filter, the little baby water filter in bypass. And see, it gave me a little, a little squirt of dirty water, but... Uh, we're just gonna let that run and i'm gonna go to the truck and uh i'm gonna get the air compressor we're gonna air the tank back up and see if while we add air to the tank if it makes the water get dirty because that's what it should do if a tank's bad and the tank is the reason why they're getting discolored water when you air it back up you're filling it back full of air again and you're forcing all the trapped dirty water out so that's what I expect to find um, when I do this. Now, I did not bring a tank with me and I don't have a contract to do a tank. So I'll have to talk with her after this to see if that's even something that they want to do. But um, I, can, I can already guarantee 
that that well is not the problem and this ju just judging by what the water looked like coming out of the tank and what the water looked like coming out of that faucet it ain't that bad it may look a little hazy inside of like um a glass but that that is not bad water that is not bad water all right yeah it's not even yeah, that, that, that's fine okay i'm gonna go hook this up and start adding air to the tank okay so how to properly recharge the bladder tank first thing you want to do is either go to your breaker or wherever you have a power source that feeds your switch and turn it off then you can hook up your air compressor now we're filling the tank the next thing we need to do we need to turn down the regulator some we don't want to pump it up to 120 psi the next thing that you do is go outside to an outdoor faucet and open it up that's going to push out all the water that's in the tank okay here we go Ooh. now here is another do not do do not leave a spigot or a faucet hooked up to a garden hose outside during winter yeah look at that you see that was trapped in that stem right there so right now the pump is off it will not kick on the only thing that's pushing that water out now is the compressed air that the compressor is putting in the bladder tank so if the tank was good what's going to happen is that will eventually push out all the water and you won't hear any air leaking out if the tank is bad you'll actually be able to put your thumb over that and you'll be able to hear air leak out because there's supposed to be supposed to be a good rubber bladder in that tank so it's not supposed to allow the air to escape okay this is just going to be a about a 10 minute time consuming process so i'm going to go ahead and just sit under here with the compressor and we're just gonna let the tank do its thing and we'll monitor our pressures on our compressor and make sure it doesn't get too high you know once it gets to about 60 theoretically it should drop to zero somewhere in here but um i think this is a 40 60 switch so we're gonna want somewhere around 35 to 38 psi there in the tank but we have to determine definitively if it's bad or not so that's going to be the next step typically when you get water out the top of a schrader valve the tank's bad and like knocking on it it's supposed to ring like a bell you're supposed to be able to move it and all those things i got water out the schrader valve i couldn't move it and it didn't ring like a bell it sounded like a thud so i think the tank is bad but it's not our tank so it's just something that has to be done replaced in the near future cool i'm gonna shut it off here and i'll catch y'all back up once i get a figure on you know what the actual um situation is but yeah that's uh that's laughable look at my foot that 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 water softener bed is 12 inches cute it's like a minion okay well it's been all of 60 seconds and i have learned what the issue is so we come over here and look we've got 60 psi of air pressure pushed into the tank and i have only ran this compressor for maybe two and a half minutes this is not a high flow compressor now we come to the tank it's supposed to be empty but it's still full now we've pressurized it with 60 psi still full of water come down here look that's all we get we get a little bit of a dribble so there is a hole in the bladder and it's in a spot to where it's not allowing the water to push out so the water is trapped so if your bladder seam is here the water is trapped up here it's trapped above the bladder and i'm trying to put air into it and i can't because the water is preventing that from happening there's no way to get the water out so 100 percent definitive the tank is bad the tank needs to be replaced but i don't have one with me i was actually coming here just to camera the well and uh there's no, there ain't nothing i can do about it so now what i have to do i have to actually lower the air pressure in the tank back down to like 35 psi 
even though there's like this much air in the tank it's not much um, but if I were to leave 60 pounds of pressure of air in the tank as soon as the pump kicks on it's gonna kick itself right back off because it's already got 60 pounds in the tank it's just trapped on the upper side so I have to I have to release some of the pressure I'll have to check this more accurately with a um with a pressure gauge okay I just now that I've got the system operating I wanted to go out here again and look at the uh, water coming out the faucet okay yeah it's got turbidity in it I can tell so I believe because see we added air to the tank we stirred all the crap up that's what's happening so I don't really think it's the well I think it's the tank so what we're gonna do we're gonna replace the tank in the near future and I'm also gonna put a small sediment filter in the line because that that's really what it needs it needs a sediment filter cool I'm gonna let this run for a little bit try to flush it I'm also gonna go to the truck I gotta go get a, uh, a digital pressure gauge to where I could check the air pressure in the tank and um, I can get out of here. I can give her the news, tell her that I need to come back, replace the tank and install the filter and then we'll just go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead, wrap it up here and I'll catch y'all back at the drill site in about an hour. Well, I just got done talking with the homeowner and she told me she wants me to go ahead and remove the water softener and replace the bladder tank and go ahead and put in a filter. So um, I explained to her everything. And you know, <clears throat> the reason why I didn't bring a tank with me on this job was because we had a conversation about it. And she said that she has had two plumbers at her house and both of them said that it was a well problem. And I asked her, I was like, are you sure your bladder tank's not bad? And she goes, oh no, both plumbers said that it was fine. So. It, was, it wasn't fine. Um, but on another note, I just got a text message from Justin. He says that they've hit big water. So thankfully, the trailer park has got great water. I don't know how deep we are. I don't know anything. I'm on the way to the job site now. Um, I had other things I needed to do, but I'm going to skip those, and go help the guys pull out, and then towards the end of the day, I'll go do what it is I needed to do. Um, you know that's what I was headed to do now but um, once you get water it's time to pull out and they can't do it without me so headed there now and um, yeah I'm excited to see what it was or what it is I got in the truck so we could talk a little bit easier and I wouldn't have to turn the volume down. Um, <clears throat> right now, we're making about 15 gallons a minute, which in my opinion is pretty good. The old well said that it made 15 gallons a minute, but the old well was only 285 foot deep. My thoughts are maybe if this well fills up, somehow it may bridge over and fill that well up. Who knows? 
um, but that well has filled in with 40 foot of sediment over the period of like 36, 38 years. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna order a horse and a half, 15 gallon a minute pump, and we're gonna stick it in this well at 300 foot, and then we're gonna trench it over to this pump house and tie it all in. But I won't get that pump until like two to three days from now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull out my underground cable locator, since I have my service truck here, and I'm gonna locate as many uh, underground electrical lines as possible to where when we trench from point a to point b we don't hit any big power in the ground because the old pump house had a meter that fed it and they've pulled the meter then they trenched a wire from the old gentleman's barn to the pump house and that is now what feeds it so there's an old wire underground that still probably is hot that feeds the old meter base. And then there's a number eight wire that comes from the barn that feeds the well now. And we can't hit either of those. And there's also a main water line that feeds from the pump house there all the way down this driveway. So <clears throat> we can't hit any of that. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead now marks all the underground utilities and then by then we'll be ready to pull out so that's our game plan just letting you know all right so i got my cable locator out and this is the old pump house this was the old meter that had gotten pulled and it basically goes here i traced this all the way down the hill it's a flag here, one there. It runs all the way down and then it hits the wood line and then it goes back up. There's a flag right there where my fingertip is. And it goes right behind this trailer where a large meter box is. But that no longer feeds this pup house. Now what feeds it is this line. Then it goes here, which is, I'm so glad I moved the well location forward because they wanted me back closer to the pine. That would have put us, put us in a pickle. So this is where it goes. It runs right behind the machine. About, about nine feet. And it runs all the way over here to the building. And it comes out the wall right here. So that's going to be our feed. The guys are going to work on pulling the drill, pull all the rod out.
doggy. Now we just gotta have to wrap it all up. All right, well, I got the pad trailer all backed up. We picked up everything around the drilling rig and um, I had to get out of the way because they're gonna move forward here in a second. We had to let the machines warm up. The front drive motor sat outside all night, so it's cold. And we had to let it air up, so. We've got mats underneath it. We first have to pull the rig forward. And then we have to pull the water truck forward. Man, at last, woo wee. Yeah, look at that. The, the 10 foot that we didn't put it. Yeah, we it's just off and put them on that side. just yeah. ruined. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, man, that's like 12 inches. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my front 12 side. inches. Woo wee! My front side went down this morning. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that on yours. Yeah, that's a nightmare. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I'll pull the truck forward. And it'll help us load these up. I actually thought about pulling the water truck forward, but. Watch the holes. Cool. Because they don't have to come up clean. Yeah. I've had them before where they're just mud and oh, just yeah. cake to them. The Got to take them up to them. Yep. yep. Them ones on the oh, yeah, then, then they're heavy. Yep. Yeah, it's this, a, this time of year, there's no good site. No, no, no. The good gone. sites are ending right now. Yep. This is it right here. This is done. We'll go do sea bowl tees, and that's going to be about it. Anywhere even close to a bottle. <laughs> so I went to look. I went to look at the liner jobs, and the lady was like, "Oh yeah, I've already had two plumbers out here. <laughs> Tank right. was bad. Huh? Tank was bad." The tank was bad. Yep, the tank's bad, and that's what's giving her discolored water. Oh. She has a water softener that has this 12, 12 inches tall. No lie. Really? The circular tube is 12 inches tall. The, the uh, salt from tank, Lowe's. From Lowe's. The salt tank. Or from Walmart. Yeah. It was, from Walmart. Uh, put the table salt in there. She, yeah. said, she said they got a business card from somebody at Lowe's, and then the guy came out and sold it to her. Yeah. And she goes, after it was installed, she felt like she got ripped off. Yeah. Said, yes, well, yes, she, yes, she did. Yeah. yeah. I said, those filters need to be 54 to 68 inches tall. Oh, that's right. And I was like, your crawl space, you can put one in there. I said, you just got to dig a hole and bury. Right. Yeah. But they got a water softener and no sediment filter. Okay. Uh, 107 foot of case, and you drilled it. Pumps at 100 foot. Oh, really? So cool, cool, cool. The, the cool, casing's cool. so deep that it's not the issue. Right. Not unless the pine trees have encroached into the well. Right. You know, that's the only other possibility. No, just a bad tank. Oh, you got her name on it? Yeah, bad. Uh, no. The really? tank was replaced in 2019 and it's already bad. Really? The original plumber who put the tank in in 2019 came back and said the tank was fine. He didn't oh, want to replace it. Didn't want to warranty. do under warranty. Yep. yep. Them all, remember? Didn't okay. Want to replace um, it now, um, what brand of tank is it? Uh, Centi Pro. Centi Pro. Huh? I heard one of those two blows was on where he got it. It's a tan tank. It is not our tank. No, 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 no. I was just wondering if we could run it through. It's uh, 2019, so you're right at the cusp of it right. making it or not. Yeah. We're we're five days until. 2024. That's, so, right, uh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Those things are pushing right yeah. Okay, gentlemen, we're going home. Philip, you're going Christmas shopping. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay, she got a plumber coming back. Who's got, gonna I change out their tank? We are. Oh, we are? Yep. Okay. She wants me to come back and do it. Because ne she's next his. week? She doesn't want that man on her property anymore. <laughs> next week, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, that's what we can do uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm I mean, gonna, Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to put in one of the medium sized whole house filters. Yeah. They want me to take the water softener out of the equation because right. they know it's not doing anything. I'm right. restricting the hell out there. It's water. not even using any salt. Well, how does it even work? It's how not, long ago did you put it in? It's just a rip off. A couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 It's probably made like. And it's leaking like a cat. Yeah, there's an the O ring in the head that's leaking. Right. So it's. There's right. so many things about it that's, right. that's yeah. Okay, up. well, cool. Yeah, just write it down next week. Y'all can go down there right after the rains and we go back to work. Yep. All right. Well, we are all done. 400 foot, 15 gallons a minute, and we've got a pump on the way. So we'll be here uh, probably in the next three to five days to uh, to put in this system to get everybody water. Um, 
hopefully by Christmas, hopefully by Christmas. Um, I think there's still six days until Christmas, so I think we'll be able to knock this out b beforehand. You'll probably watching be watching this video right around Christmas, but um, we're at this point, you know, a week prior. But um, yeah, this is probably gonna be one of the longest videos I have ever produced. Um, ever edited it's gonna take me quite a while quite a few days to go, get through all this footage um, I've used almost an, a full SD card and three to four GoPro batteries doing this so please if you enjoyed the video if you made it to the end please get a video a thumbs up if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button um, I think 16% of people who watch my videos now are subscribed so that's a that's a good thing last last couple of videos it was a 15 percent. so hopefully as time goes on more people will subscribe whether you're here for the long haul or whether you're just here you know curious or whatnot but my goal is to reach 100,000 plus subscribers and i can only do that with your help so with that being said merry christmas happy holidays thank y'all for watching and we will catch y'all on the next job site see y'all later